Jupiter, fourth degree of Aries. That cracking sound is my fire, incidentally. My Jupiter return. And this is the third time I've spoken of it. And it's interesting to notice this forward, retrograde, forward action of it. any planet is going to get you to a stage where, oh, here we are again, the fourth degree of Aries. I know what this is like. And that's why retrogradation is so helpful. Because once, I mean, sometimes Jupiter passes through a degree really quickly and you only get one hit. But if you get these three hits, which is much, much more normal, then you get the, the first one, which is a bit of a surprise or confusion or something. And then the retrogradation process where you can think it through. You can absorb the wisdom without having to express it. You should internalize it. And then the third pass is when you can express it with confidence because you know what you're doing. Um, so the two lovers represents the principle of balance between male and female um, and a happy balance. They just are lovers. They're in this delusion, <laughs> delusional period of the honeymoon kind of stage in a relationship where you've got all the endorphins flowing and you think life is great and this love is going to continue indefinitely. It's that kind of illusion. But on that energy, you do things that you wouldn't otherwise do because of your confidence, because of your um, lack of fear of the future and so on. You, you, you get to grips with um, new reaches of self. And if we think about the process that we've gone through to get to here, Aries 1, emergence, can I exist? Will I exist? You know, you, a lot of um, ideas don't have duration at all. They don't exist other than in the first moment. And that's what Aries 1 is all about. An idea comes into existence. Can it marry up with something? So to give it existence itself, beingness, that's the first stage of our process. The second is to understand that other people are doing the same thing. So you put yourself in the context of other people. And then you put yourself in the context in Aries 3 of your environment, even on the level of being aware of yourself as having a cosmic dimension. And here we come to Aries for what are you going to do now? Now that you exist, you know your context. I am this, not that. That's very important, of course. I'm in the context of being in Ireland in the 21st century. So I can be outspoken if I want to. I can let all of my thoughts be published. But if I was living in France in the 15th century, I would be a very quiet person indeed without projects because it would be dangerous then and I, I wouldn't wouldn't have that kind of recklessness which I can afford to have now. So the context in which I'm operating is given to me from the first two, three, uh, the first, the second and the third degrees of Aries. Here's the fourth. So you know where you are, you know who you are, and you know that you are. That's a pretty big statement that we take for granted. All of us take it for granted, usually, or at least to some extent. So, without taking it for granted, here I am. I'm talking about me, and I'm talking about 21st century. I'm talking about Ireland and the world that's facing Armageddon imminently and so on. That's the context of where I am in my life. So, what does my Aries 4 require of me? Balance, more than anything else. The balance between the masculine and the feminine, between the assertive and the responsive, the active and the passive, the getting on with it and doing it in an Aries-like way. No messing about. That's exactly what I'm doing. I'm doing it now and I'm going to get the job done type of Aries energy. I have to have a lot of that. But there's this sense in which that can be just too hard, too harsh. You might impact upon people normally in a way which is going to send them out of your influence because it's too hard so you have to be much more sensitive than we normally think Aries is and and that's not really fair Aries can be very sensitive indeed so here we have the 
sensitivity that goes along with this fourth degree of Aries and the assertiveness that goes along with Aries itself in balance. And, and that's what my Jupiter is. So my Jupiter is, is how I grow. And I grow through thrusting strongly, assertively, self-determinedly, and yet just checking out whether or not that's working and, and whether I need to modify what's been going on. Now, it's good to study your Jupiter returns by looking at what happened last time. So when I was 12, 24, 36, 48, 60, I've had Jupiter returns, and I have been studying them to see what happened. And there's a real clear flow in, in my life. Um, there was a time when I was doing one thing, and on a Jupiter return, I changed that, and I just tipped my toes into the water of another thing. I... I, I felt, well, maybe I can do astrology. You know, I very, very lacking in confidence. And I just started a very casual group of friends teaching them astrology at the beginner's level, of course. And then I did a, an event. I was teaching beginner's astrology on a camp. And so I was moving forward with my career as a teacher from that very first tentative step of Jupiter and Aries on the fourth degree of Aries. I was just trying to find the balance and then 12 years later I'd been teaching for 12 years and now I wanted to up my game a bit I was not 36 anymore and relatively young for a teacher I was 48 I knew what I was doing and I started teaching more sort of profound levels of spiritual practice so Sufi material and so on um, again tentatively just seeing if it worked and until it it was able for me to adjust and so on and then I got into my stride and um, became a, a teacher of Sufi practice and stuff and I remember my Jupiter return when I was 48 because I could see it in the sky I, I was outdoors at the exact right time every evening going for a walk in the dark um, while people were making supper on a three-week retreat and I would see Jupiter in the sky as I was walking along and it was just so bright and it was clear sky, cloudless sky, so cold in forests of Estonia near Tallinn. And I could see my Jupiter return is burned into my memory as being that event. I did that at that time and that was a memorable event. It was my first attempt to lead a, a large retreat in Sufism. Now, 12 years later, when I was 60, um, I'd, I'd done that, I'd, I'd gone to the end of that, I wasn't going to do any more, I'd, I'd achieved what I wanted to achieve in that region, and I I didn't know what to do next, you know, it was just like, oh, um, is it finished, you know, and I was more concentrating on giving things up, and um, yet what I was doing with my time, I was just sort of studying this stuff. I, I knew a little bit about Sabian symbols. I thought, I'll have a look at that. And that was my Jupiter return 12 years ago when I just started studying Sabian symbols seriously. I started to make notes and write things. And 12 years later, here we are. I've committed myself to work with Sabian symbols. And yet here's another Jupiter return. What will I do? And... There are some clues around me as to what might happen, but I can't be sure yet. I don't know. There's this new connection with one person and another with another person. I've got a writing project here and a um, uh, spiritual practice project there. And, and I've got various irons in the fire, but I don't know which of them are going to be the feature of my next 12 years. How do I learn? Well... The clue is in the particularity of the Sabian degree, this fourth degree of Aries. The idea of being assertive in any particular direction for a 12-year period. It's Aries, remember. Jupiter in Aries doesn't mess about. It gets on with it. It does something. And it can be controversial if it wants to. That doesn't bother a Jupiter in Aries. I, I, I did a workshop once um, of Jupiter in Aries people on a camp. And we... We were all very displeased with each other because everyone else was so arrogant. And uh, we had this kind of capacity to 
be somebody described it as naught to one hundred percent confidence in ten seconds. So Jupiter and Aries is a little bit kind of overblown in its confidence sometimes. Apart from me. Aries four, two lovers strolling through a secluded walk. Positive and negative polarities creating dynamism. Duality is central to all existence. And so to resonate with this cosmic reality and realize the full potential of our nature, we must examine and embrace the inner polarities of who we are. This is achieved in the interplay with, within some special one-to-one -one relationship, which necessarily requires a degree of isolated togetherness. Now, this is a good point to, to think about with Aries 4. You can't do it alone. It's Aries. Why can't you do it alone? Well, you can't. Not in this particular case. You need someone else. Because however much you think of yourself and come to understand yourself, you will never be able to see all of your shadow nature. It's just not doable. So you need someone else to reflect who you are. And in this particular example, it's suggesting that that other person is like the other gender. So if, if you're a woman trying to kind of be sensitive to what are the needs of this situation, how can I respond by serving the situation, then you would want a man, perhaps, or a male type of figure, uh, an assertive energy anyway, perhaps a woman who is assertive. You'd want that yang energy to say, let's do this, or you need to do that, whichever. And, and, and that would impact upon you so that you could respond at a deeper level and your response would be measured against their opinion of it. So you get this sense of objectivity. Um, so it is a time for us to consult on a one-to-one -one level. That can be your uh, partner if you want it to be, but it's also possible to do that with a counsellor. One-to-one relationships is what we're talking about here. And the the advice you need is someone who's going to say, no, no, that, that's not quite right. Think about this. You know, somebody with a different point of view to yours. That's what we're looking for here. Because without that, you can't complete the idea that you have. It will be incomplete and therefore lack potency in the world. So <clears throat> very early on in our journey through the Zodiac, in this fourth degree, of Aries, we find a warning or a helpful bit of advice. Don't try and do this alone. I know you're Aries. I know you love to do things alone, but it doesn't work as well. Try to be who you are, strong in your sense of self, good Aries energy, at the same time as allowing somebody else to do the same thing. Then you find the real mystery of Aries, which is it can thrust. It can really thrust, but it can't do that insensitively in the wrong direction. And that's what Aries sometimes does, actually, frequently. An unawakened Aries will be belligerent and do the wrong thing in, in the wrong way. But a, a more awakened Aries will be neither of those two things. What's the point in fighting? No point. Waste of energy. And what's the point in, in going off in the wrong direction? No, no point. You, you know, check your compass first. Ask for directions. You know, just get it right. And then, then you can release yourself knowing full well that you're going in the right direction. So back to my Jupiter return. I've been aware for quite some time. Jupiter's been coming and going over my... Uh, Jupiter return position for some time now and I've been aware of, of the need for me to get the next 12 years sorted out in, in my mind before I release myself and so I've you know taken other ideas into account I've considered this I've tried that I've changed things I, I've, I've made false starts in other words but that's all done, done now now, I'm uh, moving forward. Jupiter's not going to touch the fourth degree of Aries again. Now I need to decide what direction I'm going in. And so, uh, over this very short period of time, 
days, it's necessary for me to make a decision and a commitment and a statement and launch myself on a 12 year track. I won't know, I can't know what's beyond the horizon that I can see at the moment. I can only see so far. But I do know that in that direction, there exists something that, that's waiting for me, that I'm actually uh, depositing into my future by having this clarity now. Because it's Jupiter, it's fun, actually. It's, it's expansive, it feels good. Because it's Aries, it's confident. And uh, because I'm able to look back at what I've experienced before, I'm pretty clear about the general direction I'm going in. I've noticed every single Jupiter return and to some extent the opposition and not so much the square, not so obvious, but that's because it's so quick. But these energies, this Jupiter energies, is, is in the third house in my chart. It's all about teaching. This is me as a teacher. So whereas I might well have retired at this age, I'm not retired. I'm actually opening up another project. Well, this is not a three-year project or anything small. It's a 12-year project. It's a Jupiter kind of thing. So I know that. And when you know after consultation what you've got to do, how long it's going to take to do it, it's so much easier. So using astrology to, to clarify What's going on for you is supremely empowering. And I've got another Jupiter return to look forward to when I'm 84. But I don't think I'll notice it very much. I'll just say this anecdotally. I've got three simultaneous transits at that age. My Uranus return. My Pluto opposing Pluto. And my Neptune opposing Neptune. All occur at the same time. <laughs> And so over a period of two or three years, I'm going to be going through that. So I don't think my Jupiter return at that time is going to be my major focus of attention. Thanks for listening.